Hi and welcome to the DE Physical Education Flip Learning Videos. The Neuromuscular System. Pre-task, before you watch this video, I'd like to complete the following task. Write down a definition for aerobic and anaerobic respiration, explaining the differences between the two. Pause the video and complete this task. Aerobic exercise. Aerobic exercise involves air. This is performed in the presence of oxygen at a low intensity over prolonged periods of time. For example, a marathon run. This relates to slow twitch muscle fibers. Anaerobic exercise. This is performed in the absence of oxygen at a high intensity that can only be sustained for short periods of time due to the buildup of lactic acid. For example, a 100 meter sprint, and this is linked to fast twitch muscle fibers. Key terms you should know before we start this section. Slow oxidative muscle fibers. A type of muscle fiber rich in mitochondria, myoglobin, and capillaries which produce small amounts of force over long periods of time. This does not fatigue easily. Fast oxidative glycolic fibers. Type 2A fibers. Fast glycolic muscle fibers. A type of muscle fiber rich in phosphocreatine which produces a maximum force over a short period of time and these fatigue easily. Phosphocreatine. High energy compound stored in a muscle cell and used as a fuel for very high intensity energy production ATP PC system. The mitochondria, structure in the sarcoplasm responsible for aerobic energy production. Myoglobin, a protein in the muscle responsible for transporting oxygen to the mitochondria. Aerobic work slash exercise, low intensity long duration exercise in the presence of oxygen. Performed in the presence of oxygen at a low intensity over a prolonged period of time, for example in a marathon run. This is suited to type 1 slow twitch fibres. Anaerobic work. High intensity, short duration exercise in the absence of oxygen is performed in the absence of oxygen at a high intensity that can only be sustained for a short period of time due to the buildup of lactic acid, for example 100 meter sprint. This is suited to type 2 fast twitch muscle fibres. Muscle fibre types. There are three main muscle fiber types. Slow oxidative, also known as slow twitch. Fast oxidative, also known as fast twitch type 2A. And fast glycolic, also known as fast twitch type 2B. Our skeletal muscles contain a mixture of all three types of the fibers, but not in equal portions. This mix is mainly genetically determined. The relative proportion of each fiber type varies in the same muscle of different people. For example, an elite endurance athlete will have a greater proportion of slow twitch fibers in their leg muscles compared to an elite sprinter who would have a high level of fast twitch fibers. Also, postural muscles tend to have a greater proportion of slow twitch fibers as they are involved in maintaining a body position over a long period of time. These fibers have a slower contraction speed than fast twitch fibers and are better adaptive to low intensity exercise such as long distance running. They produce most of their energy aerobically and therefore have specific characteristics that allow them to use oxygen more effectively. Structure of slow twitch fibers, type 1. They're red, small, have many mitochondria. At the mitochondria, ATP is produced to cope with prolonged periods of exercise. They have many capillaries, which allow for greater blood flow to the working muscles, allowing more oxygen, therefore they can work for longer. They have a higher myoglobin. The myoglobin is found mainly in the muscle tissue, it is a storage site for oxygen. In times of oxygen deprovision, oxymyoglobin releases its bound oxygen to help create energy. It has a low glycogen. The functions of slow twitch fibers. They contract slowly. They have a slower form of AT page, which is an enzyme that splits releasing ATP. They have a lower contractile strength. They produce small amounts of force over a long period of time. And they have a high fatigue resistance. They have the enzymes to break down fat, carbohydrates to water and CO2 so less lactic acid than fatigue. And they have a high aerobic capacity. And finally, they have a low anaerobic capacity. A sporting example would be a marathon runner or aerobic event or a long distance cyclist. Highly trained distance runner have about 80% of their muscle made up of slow twitch fibers. You can't predict how good someone is just based on their percentage of muscle fibers. It also depends on training, efficiency of this cardiovascular system and the respiratory system efficiency. Type 2 fast twitch fibers. These fibers have a much faster concentration speed than slow twitch fibers and can create greater force of contraction. 
However, they also fatigue very quickly and are used for short, intense bursts of effort. They produce most of their energy anaerobically. There are two types of fast twitch fibers, type 2A and type 2B. Type 2A fast oxidative glycolic fibers, also known as FOG. Their structure are red, they have a moderate mitochondria, they have moderate capillaries, moderate myoglobin, and high glycogen. See in this diagram here of a breakdown of a muscle fiber, all the white bits are fast twitch fibers. The functions of type 2A. They contract quickly, they have a high contraction strength, they have a low fatigue resistance, and their aerobic capacity is low. They are suited to more anaerobic respiration because they release energy quickly. Anaerobic capacity is high because they produce energy aerobically and anaerobically. Type 2A fast oxidative glycolic fibers are usually found in the following sports, 800 meter runners and invasion game players. Type 2B fast glycolic fibers, also known as FG. They are white, they are the biggest fibers, they have a few mitochondria, a few capillaries, a low myoglobin and a high glycogen. They have high stores of phosphocreatine. Their functions, they have a fast contraction, they produce a large amount of force over a short period of time. They have the highest contractual strength. They have the lowest fatigue resistance as the energy is reduced quickly, but the muscle tires. Their aerobic capacity is the lowest and their anaerobic capacity is the highest as they rely solely on anaerobic respiration. Some sporting examples will be a 100 meter sprinter, Usain Bolt, 200 meter sprinters or wide receivers in American football. Any activity that requires speed and power, their athletes will have high levels of type 2 fast glycolic fibers. A sprinter has 76% fast twitch fibers compared to 24% low twitch fibers. On the table below is the structural differences of the different types of muscle fibers. This is what we've just gone through in the previous slides and it is a breakdown of all of them compared to each other. I would suggest that you copy down this table in your book or revision notes. The motor unit. Muscle fibers are grouped into motor units. A motor unit consists of a motor neuron and its muscle fibers. Only one type of muscle fiber can be found in a particular motor unit. Muscle fibers work with the nervous system so that contraction can occur. The motor neuron transmits the nerve impulse to the muscle fibers. Each motor neuron has branches that end in a neuromuscular junction on the muscle fibers. Key terms you should know. Motor unit, a motor neuron and its muscle fibers. Motor neurons, nerve cells which transmit to the brain instructions as electrical impulses to the muscles. Neuromuscular junction, where the motor neuron and the muscle fibers meet. Each muscle is made up of many motor units and they vary in size. A small muscle that is used for fine motor control, for example the muscle controlling the eye movements, will have motor units that have only few fibers per motor neuron. However, a large muscle used for gross motor control, such as the quadriceps, when the leg is extended, will have motor units with a motor neuron feeding hundreds of fibers. A breakdown of this can be seen in the diagram here. The electrical impulse comes from the motor neuron, travels down the nerves to the motor units, and then to the muscle fibers, causing contraction. The all or none law. Once motor neuron stimulates the muscle fibers, either all of them contract or none of them contract. It is not possible for a motor unit to partially contract. This is called the all in none law. A minimum amount of stimulation called the threshold is required to start a contraction. If the sequence of impulses is equal to or more than the threshold, all of the muscle fibers in the motor unit will contract. However, if the sequence of impulses is less than the threshold, then no muscle action will occur. Slow twitch and fast twitch motor units. Motor units contain the same type of muscle fibers, so they are either slow twitch or fast twitch motor units. The brain will recruit slow twitch motor units for low intensity activities such as jogging or long distance swimming. If a greater force of contraction is needed, the brain will recruit fast twitch motor units for activities such as sprinting or powerlifting. Breaking the motor units down. Our bodies try to be lazy. It tries to get away with only activating one part of the muscle, the least tiring part, or the type 1 fibers. If this then fails, then the fast twitch fibers are activated. When motor units are activated, they activate in the following order. Type 1, then type 2A, and then type 2B. When we go for a run, type 1 is activated. If the action needs to be more explosive, then type 2A is recruited. And if even more power is needed, type 2B is activated. A practical example, the gym scenario. You go to lift a heavy bar at the gym, type 1 is activated. If you cannot lift the bar, type 2A is activated. 
If more strength is needed, then type 2B is recruited to lift the bar. This is why there is a slight delay in us being able to lift the bar, as we have to go through type 1, and then type 2, and then eventually type 2B. How to increase the strength of the contraction. A basketball player jumping for a rebound needs to exert as much force as possible to gain the height needed to win a rebound. In order to increase the strength of force exerted by the quadricep muscles, one of the following needs to occur. Wave summation or spatial summation. Wave summation where there is a need to repeat nerve impulses with no time to relax. Therefore, a smooth, sustained contraction occurs rather than twitches. For example, consecutive box jumps. This is often called a titanic contraction. Spatial summation when the strength of the contraction changes by altering the number and size of the muscle motor units. For example, squatting. Key terms you should know. All or non-law. Where a sequence of impulse has to be sufficient intensity to stimulate all of the muscle fibers in a motor unit in order for them to contract. If not, none of them will contract. Wave summation. When there is repeated nerve impulses with no time to relax, so a smooth sustained contraction occurs rather than twitches. Tectanic contraction, a sustained muscle contraction caused by a series of fast repeating stimuli. Spatial simulation, when the strength of the contraction changes by altering number of size of the muscle motor units.